and welcome. You're watching an episode of Emotion Ocean Talks, presented to you by Gabriele Kerber. That would be me. I want to take you today to the Red Sea. Unfortunately, not literally, only in words. I want to tell you a little bit about why the Red Sea is special, what it is and where it is, and how it was formed. So the Red Sea is a seawater inlet of the Indian Ocean. The Indian Ocean forms the Arabian Gulf, of which the Gulf of Aden is a part. And the Gulf of Aden opens into the Red Sea, which then in turn separates Africa from Asia, the Arab Peninsula being part of Asia. So naturally, this seawater inlet has only one connection to the other world's uh, water masses, here to the Indo-Pacific. In the north of the Red Sea, the Sinai Peninsula split the sea into two tips, the eastern one being the Gulf of Aqaba and the western one being the Gulf of Suez. Here in the Gulf of Suez, mankind built the Suez Canal, which connect the Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea and making the Red Sea one of the really favorite popular sea water transport straits or paths of the world. But about that a little bit later. Here where the Red Sea is connected to the Gulf of Aden, we have the Strait of Bab al Mandab, which means translated the Gate of Grief. How did the Red Sea get its name? It is named, this water mass is named Red Sea in basically every language that has a name for that sea. But where the name comes from is not quite clear. The most often cited theory says that it comes from the periodic bloom of the sea center, sawdust, which is a filamentous cyanobacteria, which sometimes blooms, covers huge surfaces and colors them red. But there are other theories where the Red Sea got its name from. We will probably never know what the real origin of the name is. But what we know is how this Red Sea came into existence. It is actually formed by the splitting of Asia from Africa, which happened about 130 million years ago. But at that time, obviously, there was nothing here. There was no Red Sea. The depression became only noticeable much later, so near 38 million years ago, when the widening between those two tectonic plates accelerated. So basically here in the Red Sea or below the Red Sea, we have a rift zone. We have the Red Sea Rift. And when we look at the tectonic plates, we have here three plates. The African plate, the Arabic plate, and down here, the Somalian plate. The plate tectonic theory says that all our Earth, the crust of the Earth, is made by plates which drift due to the movement of the hot magma underneath. So, all the movement of the plates, they're drifting apart, they're drifting in the direction of each other, all that is always taken in reference to Africa. So we consider the African plate to be stable in its location and everything moves in relation to Africa. And the movement we have here is that the Arabic plate moves into a northeastern direction by about 2 cm per year or 0.8 inches. The Somalian plate moves with about
about 6 mm or 0.2 inches per year in a south east southeastern direction. So where the tectonic plates drift apart, where the Arabic plate moves away from the African plate, we have a gap. And along this gap, molten stone, magma, can rise up. And by that, the area of the two plates will be extended. The plates are growing there and we have a row of volcanoes because of increased volcanic activity along this rift line. So, in the Red Sea, we do have volcanoes here along this middle line. Most of those volcanoes are nowadays dormant. That means they don't erupt, they are not active. But one of them on the isle or the volcano of Jabal al Tair, which is located here between Yemen and Djibouti or Eritrea, erupted in 2007, so not that long ago. Another observation which proves volcanic activity along the rift zone is that at several spots hot brine could be observed to rise and part of the brine is metalliferous mud of volcanic uh, origin. The volcanic activity along the rift zone is also one of the reasons why the Red Sea was parted, was completely blocked off toward the Indian Ocean several times over the past million years. Because lava rose or lava flew into this uh, Bab al Mandab and the sea ground rose and therefore at some point it came over the sea level so no passage was possible anymore making the, it, that inlet a complete closed sea. Another reason for the complete blocking of this Bab al Mandab between the Indian Ocean and the Red Sea was actually not when the sea ground rose but when the sea level dropped and that happened again and again during different ice ages. So due to volcanic activity and climate changes the Red Sea was separated from the rest of the sea water of the world several times and at least once it fell completely dry and we only had salt flats where we have nowadays the Red Sea. The Red Sea as we have it today exists for a mere 5000 years so it is actually very young and this rift between the African and the Arabic plate as well as the Somalian plate is still widening. Nowadays the Red Sea is about 2,250 kilometer long, which translates into 1,400 miles. At the widest part, it is about 355 kilometers wide, or 220 miles, and on average, it is 280 kilometers, or 175 miles wide. When I first learned about the Red Sea, even when I went first there for diving and snorkeling, I actually thought that the Red Sea is a rather shallow sea. But I was mistaken. It is actually up to 2,211 meters deep or according to another source that I found even 2,920 meters. Those two numbers translate into 7,250 feet or 9,580 feet. So, not really shallow anymore, but 40% of the Red Sea actually is shallow, is not several hundred or even thousand meters deep, um, so that we have an average depth of not even 500 meters or 1,600 feet. So much now on the formation and geographical characteristics of the Red Sea. In the next Emotion Ocean Talks, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the bioclimatic factors that make up this wonderful spot of the world's water masses. Take care and see you soon.